Hi there, I'm Trills, and welcome back to the video series Engaging with Art. This is our first video post-introduction, and so I want to start off discussing intent, because I think that's, for me at least, the place where I always start when it comes to assessing art from a perspective of merit or looking at it from a perspective of, a perspective simply of whether something really is art. And intent is the big question for me. Again, I have notes just off frame, so forgive me if I'm kind of looking back and forth, but I think what actually defines something as art comes down to intent of the creator. Was the thing created as art with the intention of being art by the creator? And I think that's a really really good starting point to differentiate between something that is supposed to be art and something that isn't. Now obviously that sort of thing is very subjective of course, but art itself kind of is completely subjective. I think what it comes down to is an artist creates art because they are elevating what they are creating to that level. That it's not just something being made for the sake of being made or for some sort of utilitarian purpose strictly, but rather that the object is made with an intent that is artful on the part of the artist. The reason I'm being that broad about it is because I think contemporary art, especially over the past like century, and I'm talking like fine art, has raised a lot of questions. And I think where the schism has grown between mainstream culture and contemporary art sort of comes down to the fact that a lot of things over the past century that have been described and uh, exhibited in very, very high stature as art come across to somebody not necessarily akin to art as being completely unartistic or unartful. I think a good example of that is Duchamp, who, um, for those who are unfamiliar, Marcel Duchamp was the one who took a urinal and signed it. And then it was exhibited, I believe, at MoMA in New York, but forgive me because I might be getting that wrong. Or I can't remember necessarily where, but um, that was one of the big controversial pieces. There have been others and maybe some people more, more privy to art history would, you know, point to better examples. But that's just one example that I think a lot of people on the mainstream side of things can agree is ridiculous or seems ridiculous but that's where the point of intent comes to me that became art because duchamp did so with the purpose of it being art and once that is established i think that's the important thing you need to establish that there is the intent that an object a piece is art before you can then go further to understand okay what makes this art, why is this art, and then ultimately what is the artist doing with this. I personally think that anything created with the intent of being art will affect the viewer. Now that doesn't necessarily mean in a good way, like again returning to the Duchamp example, that can be completely off-putting for people. That can be completely just make them want to write off contemporary art as a whole, but I think because of that, it almost makes it more art in a way. It's sort of like a backwards sort of look. Like for example, if you come across something that you're told is art and to you, your reaction is something along the lines of that's not art at all, or it's very tense or uncomfortable. I think the fact that you're having that response is actually heightening the fact that it is indeed art. And that's something that I want to really point out too. I think a clue to whether something is art or whether something was created with the intent of being art is the reaction you have within you, whether or not that's positive or negative. And I think sometimes the negative reactions are almost the more important because they're drawing something out within you that is questioning a preconceived notion that you already had, if that makes sense. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not about art having to be reactionary or trying to be provocative for the sake of it, but it's more so the fact that because it's eliciting a response within you, though it's negative, the fact that it's all, it's creating that within you is part of the experience. And I think that's what it comes down to. It's about the experience factor of it. And starting there, discovering that, I think is the jumping off point to then begin assessing what is making this thing 
do this to me. I want to take a moment now to bring up the topic of commercialism. I think commercialism affects certain types of art far more than others, but I think it's incredibly important to discuss because of the influence that it has on artistic intent and integrity. Think, for example, about genres like film or music or video games, where there is a necessity for these, these media of art to produce a certain amount of revenue. Because of this relation to the business world, because of this need for commoditization and this need for a return on investment, more deliberately, I guess you would say, what happens is you have a blend then between artistic intent and the needs of the business or the corporate mindset. I think this sort of muddies the waters a bit. And what it does is it makes it harder, I think, to see the artistic intent because as the consumer, as the viewer, as the, you know, one who is receiving this end product, part of what you're experiencing was the artistic intent, but then part of what you're experiencing were decisions made in order for it to be appealing, which then comes down to it just simply being a commodity versus being true art. So what do we have in this case? I think it's not a matter of these things being less art. I think what it is, it's a matter of recognizing that artistic intent is coming in a bit of a sliding scale. Less degrees than, say, something in fine art that is created purely as art. And this is also probably a good time to mention that nothing is perfect, and that also means art is not perfect. And so even in the best circumstances, when we have like an artist, for example, producing fine art for the sake of art, there's not to say that it's no way made to be appealing or no way made to appease buyers, don't get me wrong. It's important to recognize not that the art is taken away because of the commercialization, but rather to recognize that in spite of the commercialization, that art is still there. Because I think what I want to encourage everybody to do in this case, because this is again about engaging with art, is to recognize that even those things that are made as commodities, part of the entertainment industry, part of that business, there is still artistic intent there, even if it's very small. And I think that that's worth discovering. I like to continue bringing up the medium of video games in this discussion because I think that is still an area that is really not very accepted by mainstream culture or even the art culture as a medium of art because of how tied it is to being an entertainment commodity. But that's the thing about it is I think it's important to look at the fact that there are creators with a vision and with an idea and wanting to draw a viewer into unique experience. And that's happening within that industry, despite the fact that it is such a large entertainment industry. And they are created with artistic intent that's worth seeking, even if it's small. And I think that that opens us up to a lot more possibilities when it comes to engaging and understanding. If we recognize that within something, within the final end product, no matter what sort of, you know, business or corporate tape is sort of wrapped around it, there's some kernel of artistic merit to be found in it and intent to be found in it. And then again, it draws us back to the, okay, why? Why and how did the artist create in this way? So once we can recognize that something was created with artistic intent behind it, that intent itself always then becomes my end goal. So now it's about specificity. I always start to think and seek, okay, what is the artist trying to evoke with this work? What is the artist trying to do? Why was this created as an art object? And so this leads me to a lot of questions. What am I experiencing when I'm engaging with this object? So like, for example, here are some of the questions that I, that always come to me that I think of. Is something being felt within me? Is something suggested to me at a thought provoking level? You know, like, are there concepts? Are there ideas coming to mind? Are there moods or emotions or feelings within me that are drawn out because of this engagement? I try to look at what's happening within me while I'm engaging with this art object. And this again returns back to our initial point. Whether those are positive or whether those are negative doesn't really matter. It's just about the response that we have. 
what we're doing then is taking that response and then kind of zeroing in. Is it negative? Is it positive? What is coming out? What feelings, what thoughts, etc. That's my approach and what I really love to do because it helps me to start to try to discover the artist's intent. Suddenly I am on a journey to discover what it is the artist intended by creating this object. And so I use the tools that are coming up with me, these feelings, these thoughts, this experience to drive me to that discovery essentially. So once we've kind of got a, a feeling of the intent, once we understand how we are responding and what's coming out within us, we can then examine what it is about the art object, the qualities in the way the medium was used in order to help us better assess how the artist came to do this and why they came to do this in the way they chose to do it. I like to think of all art, any art object at all, as essentially a combination of elements working together to produce a certain effect within us by an intent of the artist. Once we've understood our response, once we start to discover the intent the artist has behind the artwork, then we can start to examine those tools that were used and how they were used and the effect that they create. This is a really good stopping point because now in the next video in this series, I can start kind of going a bit more granular and a bit more close to okay, so what about this medium does this? You know, different qualities, different things about the art you're looking at that could be doing the effect within you you're feeling, if that makes sense. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. Uh, please share this with anybody who is interested in engaging with art more thoughtfully and have a good day. Until the next one. Thank you.